So when Star Wars Episode One came out, I got obsessed with the character Padme, played by Natalie Portman. The figures came with a Comtech chip that featured lines from the movie when using a chip reader that was sold separately. It worked in a way that if you place the figure with the chip on top of it, you'll hear different lines from each character. So this is technically the formal Padme card. This is the American release of the figure, and when you scan the chip... You're a funny little boy. How do you know so much? You hear her lines. This is where my passion is now, is collecting foreign because I want to feel what these kids that got this in Brazil and Venezuela and all these countries got when they first got their figures. As a kid, you don't think about other kids in Argentina playing with the same toys that you played with in as much respect. It's cool to think about now as an adult that someone over there in the 1980s when I was growing up it was having the same experiences and feelings and thoughts about their toys as we did. When I first got online, um, the online collecting community, I discovered there were so many ponies I never knew existed. There are so many ponies that were only available overseas, and it just opened a whole new door of collecting. When I got my first pony from overseas, I opened it up, and I literally cried. It was like being back in the stores again and seeing ponies that I never knew existed for the first time. This is just a small subset of all the cereals that I have. I have a couple thousand uh, different Star Wars cereal boxes from about 150 countries. And these, the ones in here are just a sample from all over the world. Like these are from Spain, these are from Southeast Asia, these are from the US, vintage ones from the US. There are ones here from Australia, from South Africa, from Germany, um, and so uh, just lots of different countries. Uh, what I have here is mostly the vintage ones on display and a few of the modern ones that I really liked, uh, but there's just not even enough space to show all of them. Uh, this is only a couple hundred of them because they've made so many different Star Wars cereal boxes. So I was in Europe during the premiere of episode one, and I was on the hunt during the trip trying to get as many Star Wars figs as I could. Little did I know, the cards were different. I got this one in Germany, and as you can see, the figure looks almost identical, but the card changes, and it features a description in different languages. This is the same card used in most of Europe. During the big craze, and usually when every other toy company takes on the market, we market for overseas. Uh, this one was in, um, this is a Sakuda, which was for the Asian market. None of the collectors really talk about these kids, but I had to have it in my collection because it's foreign, hard to find, and not too many people have it. Well, I know this isn't something that I grew up with, but it's different. And I, I'm, I had a lot of the uh, US stuff already. I was at the point where I had almost everything I had as a child. I, I was collecting outside of that. Other GI Joes from Argentina, those are the most sought after. Later on, I got this figure online from the Mexican batch. And again, the card is the variant. There's some minor color differences in the figure, but the card is what really changes. Both the UK version and this Mexican version speaks, if you will, in English when you scan them. Every foreign collector wants one of these. It's something that they always strive to get, and I've been lucky enough to have the mortal. Screams Argentina to me. Snake eyes with red and chrome. A really cool figure, it's part of the Argent 7. Also from Argentina, Argentina has some of the best figures, is uh, the uh, Red Storm Shadow, Satan. He's a badass. If your name is the devil, you're, you're, you're a badass. If you talk about um, He-Man and the different countries of origin, so that in itself is a variant in the collector world. There's countries of origin like Yugoslavia, which is really more of a knockoff, not an official. But then you go down to like Argentina and Brazil and you've got companies like Top Toys and you've got um, a bunch of other companies that were legitimate, had the license from Mattel and permitted to make these toys. Those aren't knockoffs in my world, but those are absolutely variants in the collector world. I got this beauty in Italy. And as you can hear, she speaks Italiano. So you know Panthor, the domestic one, was always flocked. So it had that fuzzy feel to it. But 
Yugoslavia, or they call it Yugo for short, was the only country to produce the Battle Cat in that same green flocking. And that one is... Why do you like these that are flocked? Because they kind of feel like a 12-year-old's nutsack. I like that. That's (laughs) awesome. Why would you say that? Because He-Man people are creepy, Justice. You're creepy. I, you own these, not me. You, That's a pretty cool, Battle Cat. What is what is a, a Yugo flocked Battle Cat with all of the yellow rubbed off in it go for these days? If you can find one anywhere 80 to $200. This one I got in Spain. And of course, when you scan it, she speaks Spanish from Spain. We we all want what they what they have. And now it's it's still the same thing as far as them wanting the U.S. stuff because I do I have done a lot of trades. I've taken the 25th anniversary uh, figures and vehicles and I've traded them with people in Brazil. The one that started it all for me, the Cobra Diaco from Brazil, the uh, Flash body with Snake Eyes head, change colors. You know, when I think of Brazil figures, automatically this pops into my head. I could be looking at any Brazil figure. Cobra de Aco is there somewhere in my brain because he just screams Estrella. Hasbro had an, a working relationship with a factory in Brazil, Estrella. And Estrella, I believe, supplied all of South America and Latin America with toys. There were some Yugoslavian soldiers. There were French soldiers. There were German soldiers. It was into, uh, G.I. Joe was, into, it was an American group, but it was... Uh, people over in Europe by an, by an international group because the battle, of course, was against international terrorism. The brilliance of the color, uh, the darkness and the green their, and the, their it, take, as opposed to the dullness in ours. And, their take, know, or, different. Their like take on the concept is when you look at it, you go, wow, <laughs> this is what they thought G.I. Joe was. When we watched the design or the film and saw that aquela quantidade gigantesca de personagens e aí nas lojas você ia procurar e não achava você a gente estranhava né falava pô mas esse personagem ele não saiu ele faz tanto sucesso no desenho né e a gente se questionava como que isso acontecia let me see this this is a black blood mosquito made by top toys okay Argen- I get out, of you, out of Uganda Argen- Argentina I am totally behind this this is cool it's freaking amazing that is cool. so the blood you know, in, in our version was red and it still stayed red all these 30 years later. But for whatever reason, the mixture ended up turning black for the oh, Topps Toys version. Oh, so it wasn't versions. supposed to be black. Correct. And the pump function never worked for like oh. ours. You pump it and the blood kind of flows right there. But for whatever reason, they just cut corners again and they didn't make the actual uh, pump f- function work. And then collectors really dig that black blood version because not many are out there and the, the Ethiopian version, its, its name is actually HIV, <laughs> so, which is awesome. Um. Now, this baby over here happens to be a bootleg version from China. They were mass produced and were somewhat available back in 1999, but now they're hard to find. As you can see, it looks completely different from the rest, and that is what makes it so interesting. Obviously, getting pony mail is super exciting no matter when you get it and where it comes from. But getting an international package with a stamp on it is super exciting because you know it's something good. And when I was in um, college, I was living with my parents and I would get like multiple international packages. And it even got to the point where our mail lady actually asked my mother if I was running like some kind of international cartel. (laughs) There is absolutely a certain part of, of me having a little bit of joy and a little bit of fun knowing that I have this piece and very few people have this particular piece. I want to be that prime collector that collects the hard to find stuff. I don't just want what everybody has. It's no fun in that. So it's good to find the, the hard stuff, the diamond and the rust. And this one, my favorite, of course, is the crown jewel of my Padme collection because this one is the prototype used to create all of these. I got this from a former Hasbro employee back in the day, and it's probably my favorite piece in my entire collection. It was always in the back of my mind that once I finish off the US release of Generation One, that's where I'm gonna go. And now that I've kind of gotten to that stage, 
I've started branching out into the international figures, like the European and Japanese and even South American figures. There's a few that I'm missing that I'm kind of holding off and they're very hard to find, but it's, I haven't found that sweet spot with the price. <laughs>